Hey everyone, I'm Zoe at the Movies, and today I'm here with the beautiful Megan Nicole Dong. I'm so excited to talk to you, the executive producer and creator of Centaur World, which is the new animated series that's going to be on Netflix. It's adorable, I love the characters, and I'm so excited to talk to you. Awesome, thank you so much. The Centaur World is definitely super original. It's kind of about an outsider, I guess, trying to find herself um, in the big world, and she's bonded with others. And I understand that, I guess, when you were younger, um, you almost felt kind of like horse, how she is in her situation. So I guess, did you base yourself, I mean, not, did you base horse off of yourself in any way, if that makes sense? A little bit, definitely. Um, uh, I mean, like, uh, horse kind of became her own character as we were developing this, but, um, but yeah, like, the, her journey um, definitely mirrors my own, just kind of, uh, um, uh, I, I was in, um, I thought that I was supposed to study and, and study really hard and do really well in school and, and go, you know, pursue something that was a more conventional career. And then I wound up in a show choir unexpectedly. Um, and and um, that whole experience changed me and really pushed me towards the art. How was it, was it, I guess, challenging at all to make Horse relatable for other audiences um, when they're watching to kind of connect with her? Um, yeah, I mean, in the first place, she's she's not human, right? So she's a she's a horse. So I think um, I, I think that um, making her relatable for, for sure was a was a challenge. What is happening? I think that like uh, Kamiko Glenn, who who portrays Horace, really brought so much um, so much character and heart to uh, to Horace. And um, I, but I do think that audiences will will relate to her because. Um, because of um, like her struggles that she go the struggles that she goes through when she first arrives in Centaur World, and um, also just the uh, um, just like the humor that Kamiko brought to the character, and also her you know like Kamiko's got an amazing singing voice, and and um, I think telling the story through um, through songs really um, helped us bring the character to life. <laughs> Did I just say things with my mouth? <gasps> a new friend? Oh. At the beginning, we can really see that Horse is definitely like a very strong and I guess almost tough character. But as you keep on watching, you kind of discover that she's uh, really sweet too. And she has like another side of her that you kind of get to <laughs> kind of while watching. And one of my favorite aspects of the show, I guess, is that you could kind of balance comedy and then like the action scenes and everything, like the musical road trip, I guess. Was it kind of hard to combine so many things into like one series? Absolutely. That was one of our biggest challenges is that uh, there were so many different things going on, so many different influences and, and um, you know, like the comedy, the, the action, um, some of the scarier elements too, and kind of finding that balance was um, was certainly a challenge. And I think for us, uh, we always prioritized um, Horse's emotional journey and her growth as a character um, and kind of made sure that that was at the heart of everything. And that kind of served to guide us through like, okay, how much of all of these things should we include? And um, we always, uh, and we also used the songs to kind of help us with the narrative as well, because we always wanted those songs to be um, reflective of the character's emotions and for them to always be narrative. So I think, um, I think the things helped us kind of keep things uh, um, cohesive and make like it allowed us to to make sense of it all. Where am I? You made it to Centaur World. And nothing better represents our world. How was it, I guess, making the difference between like the real, I guess, dark world, but then like the Centaur world, which is like super happy and bright and colorful with the the little pancakes or cable cakes? Is that what they're <laughs> cable called? cakes? Yeah. <laughs> um, we wanted everything to to feel extremely distinct so even like like visually um like we we ended up working with two different completely different animation studios to work on both of those styles so uh, horses world was animated by one studio that specializes more in action and then um centaur world uh was animated by a studio that you know like really did did well with a like, more cartoony squashy stretchy um style and um, and that was very much a part of the storytelling too, is we wanted this, these to feel like two completely different shows that kind of, you know, got put together in a blender. Um, uh, so that was, um, yeah, so making these two places feel really distinct was always really important for us. Yeah, I think you nailed it though in the end. Uh, like what I've seen so far, I've fallen in love with the series. And I also love that all the characters are like so different and like diverse. I mean, you got like a zebra with like the body of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
I love all the characters. And uh, also, so like touching on the animation now, I guess what um, other inspirations did you take to make this? Because I, the animation, I, I loved it. And I also think I could definitely see this show definitely being like in Cartoon Network or something like I would see like on television, you know? Yeah, um, I, I drew from a lot of influences um, um, from animation and also just from other stuff that I like. Um, so like um, we have we um, it was inspired by, you know, like Muppets too, like a lot of like just Muppets and, and puppets um, were a huge inspiration for kind of like the way that the centaurs moved and looked. Um, and also um, like video games were kind of an influence as well, like Breath of the Wild and Zelda was kind of like a bit of an influence for like the horse and rider relationship and kind of what that world felt like. Um, and then uh, like Disney Disney musicals, of course, were, were a big influence as well. Um, shows like Crazy Girlfriend and Flight of the Concords, like those, you know, live action musical shows like that were also an influence too. Um, but we kind of like, we kind of just put everything that we liked into, into the show. And I also understand that you have a background in musical theater. So how important was it for you to incorporate music and make songs for the series as well? I, I love them all. I would definitely like add them to my playlist or something. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, like, I, cause I love musical theater so much and um, I, I wanted, um, th I wanted all of the songs to feel, um, to feel like they were just um, seamless parts of the narrative, you know, like I did, I didn't want there just to be songs that were happening just for the sake of having songs. Like I, I wanted each song to kind of, um, um, be a part of the story or uh, tell up, you know, like um, be reflective of the character's emotions, whether those were comedic songs or stuff that was, you know, like more heartfelt and serious or scary moments. Um, so I, I wanted them to be super incorporated into the into the story. So um, myself and um, my co-EP Dominic Bisignano um, wrote all of the songs. And so we were in we were in the writer's room from the beginning. We were looking at the art. We were, you know, like, um, you know, um, in there with the writers as we were uh, moving along through the story and writing the song. So I think I think the fact that we were we were there through so much of the process really helped us with the songwriting. Awesome. Yeah, um, I, I love the songs. Once again, I already said that, but it, it's true. Thank and you. And finally, to, I guess, wrap up everything. Um, so I guess as the being the creator and executive producer, what message or like what did you kind of want to accomplish with this? Because I also understood that when you were showing this idea to your family and friends, I guess they didn't exactly understand or get it and i know my mom too when she, i first showed her this series or when she first saw it she was a little confused but I, when as soon as she started watching like we could not stop um yeah it's a, i mean it's a difficult thing to describe this you know but those are also that kind of content is the, is the stuff that i'm drawn to stuff that is is um doesn't really fit into one box i, I wanted to make something that felt like it was its own thing and, and um in terms of what pe i want people to take away from it um I mean, our, our core messages are really about um, um, learning that vulnerability is a strength and finding one's family. Um, and and I think the other thing that I, I really want, I hope is comes through and I hope audiences get from it, which is how much joy was put into it. We really had so much fun making this show and um, our cast and crew like put a lot of themselves into it. And we had, um, we had a lot of fun, especially during, we, I know that part of this production we, we made in quarantine too, and and um, and I know that everyone's had such a like a, a pretty trying year, you know, like coming out of all of this. And I hope that um, I hope that Hello people to experience that some joy from watching it. We had a lot of fun. Being an audience member and as well a new fan. I can definitely say that your message and what you wanted to accomplish was definitely there and that I truly felt it while watching. Make sure to watch Centaur World on um, Netflix on July 30th, everyone.